Hey folks, uh, BP001 here. I'm going to talk about uh, Fidel Castro and what it meant for me. You see, I was born in Cuba. Uh, half of my family, uh, not only they're communists, but uh, a lot of them were uh, either in the military or some position in the Communist Party. And the other half of the family was either anti-communist or neutral, which, if you're smart, is the best way to be in a communist state like Cuba was, or is, or whatever. Is, really, still is. Just relabeled. See, my father, my father, when he was about eight and 19 years old, he was a bodyguard to uh, one of uh, Batista's. Batista was the president, or dictator prior to Fidel. But there was this famous uh, captain, his name was Sosa. My father was uh, one of his bodyguards and his driver. And uh, Sosa didn't mess around. Sosa, you know, the first time he might give you a chance, second time he comes and he wipes everybody out. And uh, that was a little bit too hard for my father because, uh, you, know, you know, we're not talking about enemy overseas or somewhere else, talking about people that you might know, people that might be even family. So my father at that age, he said, you know what, forget about it. And he went and he joined the revolutionaries, which was Fidel, his brother Raul, a few other ones that were good, that are no longer with us, and including uh, Che Guevara, the one, yes, the very same Che Guevara you see on the t-shirts. My father knew them all. He fought alongside with them and all that. Then uh, fast forward, early 60s after the Bay of Pigs and the whole thing and whatever. And my father didn't, uh, 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 Fidel declared, uh, you know, how uh, Cuba from then on was red. Red meaning communist. And my father didn't go along with that. My father said, you know what? Screw this, we're getting the hell out of here. You know, legally, you know. We have uh, my father's uh, mother, which my grandmother, and a few of his uncles, they're from Spain. You know, we're, I, most Cubans, you know, we all hail from Spain. Eventually, if you go far back enough, well, I'm a little closer than that. Still mostly Cuban, you know, from birth. Anyways, to make the story short, my father, they gave him, a, you know, they gave him a choice. Since he was sort of what they call a hero of the revolution, uh, he could have stayed, and he would have got bumped. I think he was a, I don't know, corporal, lieutenant, something close to that. He didn't give a shit about that, and uh, he didn't fight for that. He didn't join the military basically for that, really. And uh, they gave him a choice. You know, you could stay, would we'll bump up your rank to some whatever high, high up. Skip, you know, through a lot of things. And you get position and all that. And my father says, nope. I'm not going to raise my family in a communist country if I can help it. Pretty much like that. The only reason he didn't get worse is because he still had connections and he still had people. I have an uncle, not on my father's side, my mother's side. He was a two-star general in Cuba. He retired recently and all that. And a few others, a couple of captains, a colonel here and there, whatever, whatever. But anyways, my father uh, had to pretty much work for free, volunteer, they call it, volunteer. You know, you go and you work, you know, building a, a park or uh, whatever. They send you out, if you live in the, in the city, they send you out in the country and vice versa, whatever, whatever. So for seven years, we had to, you know, what my father did, bust his ass doing, you know, that and and uh, finally we made it to Spain and uh, we came over here to this country. When we were in Spain, we could we had the, ch you know, also the, the choice of we could have stayed in Spain, eventually become citizens over there. At the time, too, we could have uh, traveled to Australia. Back then, I'm talking about the 70s, mid-70s. Australia will give you, I forgot, uh, X amount of land or, or you could own property or whatever if you stay, you know, clean uh, citizen, uh, resident, whatever you call it status and uh, you become an Australian citizen, which would have been kind of cool. But I'm glad 
that my father said, nope, our aim has always been the United States. If not Cuba, then the United States. Which is kind of surprising too, you know, thinking Spain would be the second choice, but no. And we were living pretty good in Spain. We lived there for about two years. My father had a good job, and et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, in comparison, in comparison to a lot of Cubans, we had it good. And by good, I don't mean uh, we had it easy because we had money. We had nothing. Like the average Cuban, we had nothing in Cuba. Pretty much, uh, yeah, you, even with all the connections, the one thing my father always did provide was food on the table, which not everybody got. And, of course, uh, we also had a, I have an aunt here. She's still alive. And she helped us, you know, once in a while she would send whatever she could. But you really couldn't depend on that, you know on a monthly basis or whatever because it just so my father you know not only the voluntary work you know but we manage we survive that's one thing Cubans have we're not stupid we survive we're survivors uh, which uh, you know a lot of uh, people have a misconception of Fidel being a great revolutionary and the great this and the great that no he's a great deceiver he's smart it's one thing you gotta give him he's very smart because a lot of the people around them, the ones who did the actual fighting, the ones who did the actual uh, logistics and planning and all this, and the invasions here and there and all the fight, Fidel took all the credit for that. And the ones that didn't tell the line, his line, he got rid of them, one way or the other. And the ones that remained alive, well, you know, a few of them, uh, they did out 30-something years in prison for whatever. See, all the little obstacles. The one, thing, the one thing that differentiates Fidel from the rest of the South American dictators. Even though the body count might be in the hundreds of thousands, you rarely saw, if ever, you get to see that in public. Simply disappeared. I don't mean disappear like, no, they'll arrest you. They'll come and take you in the middle of the night or even in the daytime, whatever. People know you got arrested. Your family even know you got arrested. But the torture is more mental and if physical, it will be the kind like, you know, they wait it out. So psychologically, it's smarter than that. And every uh, three or four Cuban, uh, you had one, which uh, they call every neighborhood, like over here in the United States, we have the neighborhood watch. Not every neighborhood, but you know you know what I'm saying. And in Cuba, you have the neighborhood, literally you do, the committee. The committee, you make sure everybody, you know, he or she knew everybody who lived in the neighborhood, what you bring in, what's leaving, who's coming, who's going, all that. That's their freaking job. So, you know, that's a lot of distrust. That's why Cubans, you know, one, the one thing we hate the most is snitches. At least growing up, I can talk for the new generation because it's a whole different, like I said in a previous video, a great divide, even within a culture. Uh, another thing, uh, yes, Vidal raised the standard of uh, education. He did. But uh, everything has a price. Education might be free. But what good is it when it's not really education? It's more like that indoctrination. If all you know is what they feed you, you can know it, you know, frontwards, backwards, you know. But you're limited. Not by choice, but that's the, that's the way it is. The same thing with, uh, with the free healthcare. What good is healthcare when, uh, you know, people are from the United States, something as simple as aspirin. You gotta, you know, people are asking for that kind of medicine, basic medicines. And yet uh, you have people like uh, Chavez and uh, who was a soccer player from uh, Argentina, Macarena, whatever, the one with the coke habit, uh, going to Cuba for treatment and all this shit. And you would think, what? But they don't have for the common people. Of course not. Communism is supposed to be equal. Well, you know, yeah, right. I mean, the best case, tourists don't see that shit. Tourists eat lobster and all that. People are eating uh, steaks made from uh, freaking uh, mops. You think I'm joking. Remember back in those uh, Charlie Chaplin movies, you know, they would make soup out of uh, shoe leather and stuff like that. Well, Cuba, you know, Cubans improvise all kinds of shit. And you're talking about a country where, uh, part of my French, you can take a piss on the ground and a, and a flower will, because the, the soil is so fertile. That's why you got the best cigars. They come from Cuba because of the soil. So, you know, it's kind of like Hawaii, you know, everything grows, everything is, you know, for most things, it's the perfect soil the same thing but uh that's not for the average cuban that's for tourists and or overseas whatever whatever uh what else uh 
another thing, uh, every year Cubans, you know, you have uh, X amount of uh, people, you know, university level uh, graduating from, you know, becoming doctors. But of course, you know, so what is, you know, being smart, what does he do? He might send a thousand doctors to Brazil. He might send three or four thousand to Venezuela. He might send another thousand to Colombia, wherever, all over the world, even Spain or whatever. You got all these doctors. I got a, I think she's a cousin, second. And uh, she graduated with some kind of super high degree in economics and all this other shit. I mean, she was here and uh, she grew up in New York or she lived in New York. She could make a, you know, a, mil a few millions, you know, what she knows. But instead, what do they do? They send her to, I think she lived, I don't know how many years in Vietnam. The fuck in Vietnam. <laughs> what? The Vietnamese don't know how to count? Or keep inventory of the goods? Yeah, whatever. I hope uh, you see through my sarcasm, okay? So, uh, for a lot of you uh, idealistic types who think uh, Che Guevara and Fidel and all these people were great, yeah, I'm only touching on uh, just the very basics, but I can I know more details, I know more stories, and all that. But the video is already long enough, and uh, that's just my uh, my experience. Now, as far as real experience, uh, with communism. When I left the country, I was uh, about seven years old. The one thing that stuck to me, I go never again. I mean, forget about everything else, you know, politics and philosophy and all this bullshit, because I was a little kid. But the one thing, even as a little kid, I go, never again, was a freaking lines. You had to get in line for everything, whether it was going to the movies, whether you, when you when you went shopping, put it this way, you don't go shopping like, you know, normally like you do, you know, like you do, you know, you go, oh, you go shopping, you walk around, you get what you want. No, no, no. By the time, you know, the lines are like literally a couple of blocks long. By the time you finally get to inside the store, whatever it is, if it's a, you know, supermarket or whatever. Pretty much you get whatever is left, whatever is left. Never mind, uh, you don't need soap or uh, or shoes or whatever. If you could even find that, if you're lucky, you get whatever you can. And then outside in the black market, you trade, you sell whatever you split in half. You, you know, till you get what you find. You know, you want a t-shirt, but you got soap and uh, shampoo. What are you gonna do with that? You want a t-shirt, so you you know maybe somebody that that's how it works black market that was pretty much a Cuban economy me growing up and decades after we left the island so for you uh, like I said idealistic types yeah tell me about it that's why when I grew up in this country I'm gonna spend my hard-earned money I'm gonna go to a restaurant a concert whatever it is I see a line three four people fine a little bit more than that it's gonna take more than 10 minutes I'm out of there I'm not spending my money there there you go. That's how communism affected me on a real level. Now, you sure, I could also talk about horror stories. You know, the bad things that happened. People that killed, that got killed. People that got tortured. People that disappeared. That kind of stuff. But I don't want to make this into that. So, I think what I said is enough for you to know what a piece of shit communism is. As far as Fidel goes, fuck him. That's why I nearly what fourth of the, the population is out of the, living in exile that's what we you know, that's what we did we live in i grew up out of exile what do i have in common i mean really i grew up in this country american would i visit cuba of course i will my brother my nephews they were born here they, they, they've been to cuba a few times because we got we got a huge family over there and you know so far even the communist ones we get along as long as we don't talk about politics Families first, but the ones uh, who mistake that, they think the party's first, they get, fuck them. That's how it is, folks. That's how it is. That's communism for you. So, uh, Fidel finally died. It's a good thing. Problem is, it wasn't soon enough. So, that's all I got to say. And uh, this is a PP-001 out of sight, out of mind. Take care of each other.